Hey guys, so I bought a new graphics card. We have the Asus Expedition Radeon RX 570OC edition with 4GB of video memory. Ever since the Radeon 480 and the GeForce 1060 launched, I was in the market for a new video card to help with my benchmarking, but with the cryptocurrency mining, prices unfortunately uh, kept going up, so I was patiently waiting for prices to once again come down to reasonable levels. I always found that here in Australia, Radeon cards weren't quite as competitively priced. There was a higher markup compared to Nvidia cards, uh, but that seems to have changed. So the mining boom definitely has cooled down. And in Australia, we can see very cheap, uh, brand new Radeon 570 and 580 cards. So this card, I bought it from Computer Alliance. It cost me 199 Australian dollars, but that included postage. And it also comes with three games. There's a promotion going on at the moment. We will check those out later. Now, 199 Australian dollars translates to 145 US dollars, 123 euros and 111 British pounds. We will be looking at our own benchmarks, but of course I checked out other reviews and this card is definitely faster than the 1050 Ti. It's getting close to the 1060 with three gigabyte of VRAM and I believe at 1080p, around 60 FPS with uh, details maxed out, this is at the moment the best value graphics card. So let's quickly go over the specifications. We've got 2048 stream processors. The GPU runs at 1256 megahertz in the default gaming mode, but there's some bundled software. We will have a look at that later and you can change it into OC mode, which ramps up the clock speeds to 1266 megahertz. We've got four gigabyte of GDDR5 running at 7000 megahertz of effective clock speed. There's a 256 bit wide memory interface and we've got an 8 pin PCI Express power connector. So let's start off with the fans. By default, the fans are not spinning. They only start spinning at 55 degrees. And that is a feature you can turn off in the software. You can also configure a manual fan curve and have the fans kick in at a lower or higher temperature. Basically, you can customize it to your liking. The fans are also IP5X certified. That seems to be some sort of a dust resistant certification. In terms of temperatures, fan speed, clock speeds, and all of that, the software has three modes, silent mode, game mode, and OC mode. In silent mode, a 90% power limit is activated. We've got uh, some game footage here running Hitman. We're getting 97 FPS. That's with all the details maxed out. And we can see the GPU clock speed hovers between 1000 and 1040 megahertz with the fan running at 34%. The target temperature is 70 degrees, so the card will basically adjust itself to uh, hit that temperature. When we switch to game mode, the FPS improves to 105. So that's using a 100% power limit. The clock speed is now higher at 1130 MHz, uh, around about there. And the fan goes a little bit faster with 37% of the fan speed. And then in OC mode, which uses 110% power limit, we're getting 109 FPS, so not that much more compared to game mode. The clock speed goes up to 1170 MHz and the fan has to work a little bit harder at 41%. So Asus pitches this video card for non-stop action and the fans certainly do a really good job at keeping the temperatures in check. But there's more. We have industry only auto extreme technology and what that means is the card is basically built with 100% uh, automation, no uh, human interaction basically. It also mentions something called Super Alloy Power 2 and that just means they're using high efficient uh, components that don't lose much power. But what I found most interesting is they mentioned that it reduces the buzzing uh, under high load. Uh, that's known as uh, coil wine. And yes, I put my ear close to the card. I can't hear any buzzing. I'm quite sensitive to that actually. So that's uh, really good to see. Asus do mention this iCafe lab, which is basically, yeah, the idea is to simulate a real world internet cafe. So they put these cards through 144 hours of testing, including a two hour reboot test and 15 hours of 3D mark with heavy loading, just to make sure that when you get the uh, card into your hands, that it's been tested and it should work uh, without any issues. So let's have a look at the bundled software, which is called GPU Tweak 2. There's a CD in the box, but you can just download it from the ASUS website. It has two modes, easy mode 
and professional mode. In easy mode, you can uh, switch between solid mode, game mode, and OC mode, which we touched on earlier. There's also monitoring going on, so you can uh, check the temperatures, fan speed, clock speeds, and all of that stuff. When you switch to professional mode, you get more control. You can manually set the clock speeds, uh, change the voltage, set a manual fan profile, change the power target, the temperature target, and all of that. There's also the gaming booster, which does a few tweaks to the operating system, such as turning off the visual effects. You can also disable a few system services that might hold back your gaming performance. And there's a memory defragmentation tool. It also comes with an XSplit Gamecaster Premium license. It's not something I use, but uh, streaming is quite popular, so that might be of interest to you. Now, the, I ran into an issue here. On the website of the RX 570, it mentions a one-year license, but when you follow the process, uh, it takes you to a table, and here we can see that the RX 570 only qualifies for 14 days, so uh, there must have been a mistake here and might be worth a shot taking that up with uh, ASUS. The process is, is a bit annoying. You have to register your card and then fill out a questionnaire and yeah, it's just a little bit tedious. It also comes with a WT Fast six month license. That seems to be some tool to improve your ping and give you a smoother internet connection. Not sure how useful that is and if it actually works. The process is also a bit annoying. You have to, uh, again, sign up with ASUS, take a photo of your graphics card. So yeah, they make it a little bit uh, more difficult. It would be nice to just get the codes in the box ready to go. AMD is running this Race the Game promotion and Computer Lights, the shop I bought the card, from there on the list. So they also gave me a code. You then sign up with AMD Rewards, enter the code, and you can see all your games, which you then claim. At the moment, only one game is available, uh, Strange Brigade, and you get a Steam key, so that all worked fine. So I'm just waiting for the other two games to become available. And now we're gonna have a look at some benchmarks. My test bench is a little bit older, but that might actually make this more interesting. We've got an Asus H81M Plus motherboard, an i7-4790S, 16 gigabyte of RAM in dual channel configuration, a 120 gig SSD for Windows, and a two terabyte SSHD for all the games. And everything is powered by a 450 watt XFX power supply. And it's always good to have another card for comparison. I don't have a 1050 Ti anymore. I sold that last year, but I've got a Radeon RX 560D, which also has four gig of VRAM. So it's a good comparison. So here we have 3D Mark, Cloudgate, Skydiver, and Firestrike. And moving on to the first game, we've got Rise of the Tomb Raider. Now the resolution is locked to 1080p, but I benchmark at all the detail settings so you get a nice idea of which uh, detail setting might be best for your video card. And we can see that the RX 570 has no issues running uh, this game at very high details and we're getting 65 FPS. Here we have Dirt Rally and once again, ultra details, we're getting 83 FPS at 1080p. And here we have a slightly older game. This is Metro 2033 Redux. Now at ultra details, we're only getting 34 FPS, but this is because it uses super sampling anti-aliasing. And if you turn that off, you will get your 60 FPS. And you can see that when we look at the high details, here we're getting 87 FPS. But does it run Crisis? Yes, it does. 73 FPS at 1080p with very high details running in the 64-bit Direct 3D 10 option. The next game we have is For Honor. Look at that, extreme details, 68 FPS. And finally, we've got another game which supports DirectX 12. This game is quite demanding in the games I tried. This is really the only game that doesn't let you get 60 FPS with the highest details, but you just have to switch it down to high details, which looks very good, and you're getting 58 FPS. And now let's have a quick look at three more games. I will put some details in the bottom of the video.
Mr. Yu, please make yourself comfortable and we'll be on our way. Transtar facility is just a short hop. 78 degrees, clear skies all the way. So guys, let's summarize what we've seen. A 1080p, this is a really good graphics card. You can crank up the details and you're still getting 60 FPS. It's also good value. Now that will depend on the region, what the prices are like in your area it might be different. For some reason at the moment in Australia, um, these cards are being heavily promoted. I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe AMD is uh, about to launch something new. I'm not sure, but I needed something now because I've got some uh, projects in the works where I just needed a faster video card to make sure that the video card is not holding back the processor. The bundled software is nice. I really like the GPU Tweak 2 software. We had some issues with the XSplit license, so that might require you to follow up with ASUS. Also very nice to get three bundled games. Usually that is reserved for more expensive video cards. So it's nice to see a promotion like that with a more mainstream video card. And I was also happy with the cooling system, the default temperature target of 70 degrees. That seems to be working just fine. The noise was also nice and quiet uh, at around 30 to 40 percentage of the fan speed. Uh, it really doesn't distract. Of course, if you crank it up to 100%, then the card will become quite loud, but it just means there's a, a bit of headroom left for cooling if it's a hot day, for example. So yeah, all up, I'm pretty happy. It's great to see that the mining boom seems to be over and prices are coming down to reasonable uh, levels. I did buy this card before the reviews of the RTX 2080 uh, hit the internet, but I knew those cards would be really expensive and I've seen um, launches like that in the past with the uh, first transform and lighting GeForce for example or the first DirectX 9 video card. Um, you're basically an early adopter and a bit of a guinea pig uh, until the industry sorts out the APIs and the games. So I'm going to wait for the next round of uh, ray tracing cards to come out and it might actually not be of interest for a few years to come. But I'm really interested to see what AMD's response is. I don't think they will compete uh, with the 2080 cards. Really looking forward to seeing what AMD will uh, come out with. And that's it for this video, guys. If you have any questions about this video card, do let me know. You will see this being used uh, very soon in future uh, projects, uh, older and modern stuff. Um, yeah, basically I've got a video card that won't hold back some of the systems I've got uh, planned and hopefully you will find this useful as well. And that's really it for this video guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you've got any comments, leave them down below. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and I shall see you soon with another one.